I'm here with Tracy Derwing talking about her new book that she co-authored with Murray Monroe, Pronunciation Fundamentals, Evidence-Based Perspectives for L2 Teaching and Research. Um, what's the overarching message of Pronunciation Fundamentals? There have been a lot of books lately, so how is this one different and, and what's its big message? Well, I think our primary message, which is the message of almost all of our research too, is that intelligibility, which is... Um, how much the listener actually understands of the uh, speaker's message and comprehensibility, which is how much effort the listener has to put in to understand the speaker's message, that these two concepts should drive our teaching as opposed to accent and trying to get people sound like native speakers. Because, you know, for most people, that's never going to happen in the first place. And in the second place, we think that instruction could be made much more efficient if teachers and learners focused on things that are really affecting both intelligibility and comprehensibility. You know, we've gone through cycles where that, uh, that notion has been dropped in favor of native-like accuracy, partly because of a a perfect storm, you know, the communicative approach had come in and um, there was this notion, like Stephen Krashen's notion, that all you need is enough comprehensible input and then eventually yeah. that's going to be enough. Um, and so just more input. Um, but that clearly wasn't enough for a lot of our students. The difference, and we hope the, that our work and the work of many other people will will make a difference and keep the intelligibility and comprehensibility focus uh, because now we have lots of evidence from study after study after study that first intelligibility and comprehensibility are distinct speech dimensions different from accent yes. they're partially correlated but there's not a one-to-one -one correlate right. and so we need to be focusing on those factors that make a difference to understandability and uh, to make instruction more efficient. And the other thing we know from research now, from lots of empirical studies, is that pronunciation instruction can make a difference. Like we can make people more intelligible and more comprehensible. And so that should really be our goal. And I think we should Unless somebody wants to be an actor or a spy, we should just <laughs> drop the whole notion of trying to sound native-like. So Tracy, how did you first become interested in pronunciation? Uh, very early on, I, I worked in mixed language classes, but we had a lot of Vietnamese students. And they were quite different from the others in that they really struggled with intelligibility. They had a hard time making themselves understood. And... You know, even if they had a very good grasp of grammar and, and the lexicon, they still had real difficulties uh, making people understand them. How did that drive you forward at that time? Well, you know, I was uh, teaching with some other uh, colleagues who, who were also studying linguistics at the same time, including Murray Monroe, who I met uh, at, during that period. Mm -hmm. And our manager said, well, you guys, you're, you're studying linguistics. You should do something about this, like devise a course. And so we developed a standalone course for pronunciation, particularly for Vietnamese speakers. But, but later, other people who had intelligibility problems took these courses as well. Did all of this become your dissertation? It was, it, I didn't do my dissertation on, uh, on pronunciation. I was really interested in it. But at that time, if you were going to do something with pronunciation, you, you needed to be able to use a computer that took up a whole room. Mm. And uh, I wasn't technically inclined. And uh, I, there were other things that really interested me, mm -hmm. like... Um, what is it about certain teachers who seem to be able to communicate really well with low proficiency learners, uh, whereas others who can do advanced classes extremely well seem to really have difficulty communicating with, with beginners? The pronunciation stuff never went away. I mean, it, that, that period uh, was one where... I don't know, it was so stimulating, and the students were so terrific, and uh, my colleagues were so wonderful that I just felt that I needed to pursue that more. And, and the thing is, um, 
I mean, we all felt that we wanted our students to to be good communicators. That was our goal. And and so really that period changed my life because uh, together with, with Marie Monroe, we decided to do a, a whole series of, of uh, studies that dealt with pronunciation so that we could um, hopefully find ways that might make pronunciation teaching more efficient and help learners ultimately become better communicators. Uh, Tracy, what did you enjoy most about writing this book? Well, I think the, the best part for me was working with Murray Monroe, who's, you know, one of the smartest people I know, and uh, or maybe the smartest. <laughs> and, you know, what I liked about it was uh, the side conversations that we would have. Even though I'm a professor and I, you know, have worked for years with students and other colleagues and so on, it's only really uh, when you're working on a, on a research project that you have an opportunity sometimes to step back and think about what you're doing, think about uh, related ideas, and actually have those kinds of conversations that, that may bring up something new, you know, some new connections that will come to you. And I find those really stimulating and exciting. Yeah. And so that's the thing that I liked most about writing the book. Well, how did you all go about dividing up the book? Was it 50-50? Was it I'll do the first paragraph? <laughs> no, it was uh, the way we typically work is to write side by side, working, and we take turns typing, but we both contribute to what it is that we're saying. And that's how we normally work. Uh, we did that for four chapters in this book, but then Murray took three and wrote them on his own, and I took three and did them on my own. Uh, and then we had... We, we read each other's and edited each other's, and we decided in advance that there would be an anecdote at the beginning of every chapter, mm -hmm. and we decided on the tone in advance. Well, does everyone need pronunciation? There are a lot of people who don't need pronunciation instruction. Lots of people are very clear right from the get-go, yeah. and so that's great. Uh, and don't bother them with pronunciation instruction if they don't need it. But for people who are uh, limited in terms of intelligibility and um, comprehensibility, you know, some people say, well, it's, it's, it's not right because it's, it's playing around with their identities. And it's like, how can you express your identity? How can you express who you are if people don't understand you? So nobody is saying you should eliminate an accent. Yeah. We're just saying make it so that people can express who they are. Well put. Thank you so much, Tracy, for joining us today. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Karen. This was, this was a great uh, interview. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.